talk about the internet, you know, we're not, this is not just bits and bytes. This is not just pipes coming into our house. This is not just fun and games. You know, broadband, which is fast, high-speed internet, is, is, the, um, is a significant communications tool. And when I talk to people about the internet, you know, like I like to talk about it, things in pictures, right? So we need to talk about the internet and we need to think about the internet like real infrastructure that we need to have ownership over. You know, it is much more like a road. It is much more like a water line coming into our house. It is much more like electricity coming into our house. And if you hold those pictures in your mind, would we even be having these kinds of conversations about who deserves to have it, how much they get to have, what days of the week they get to use it, what time of the day? I mean, if we even had that kind of conversation about water, you know, we, and we do in some parts of our communities, but it is a very political, it is a very political conversation and people get mad and people say this is right and this is wrong and you need to make a choice and you need to choose a side. We need to have that same kind of conversation about what's happening with the internet. We're talking about not just good education, we're talking about a 21st century education. We need to be preparing our communities for what's coming, not for what we're dealing with now, but the type of knowledge and information that you need to be able to function in a very different economy. Um, social safety net. How many of you know that in some cities, like the city I used to live in, Minneapolis, the largest county, Hennepin County, they had to slash their workforce because the health and human services budget was cut, right? They put all social services online. Section 8, SSI, MFIP, WIC, you cannot get those services now unless you do all of your appointments online. That means that you either have to take two to three buses downtown, right, and you have to wait in a little kiosk, or you have to go to a Target or a Walmart where they set up a kiosk, and on your own, by yourself, you know, you're trying to figure out how to keep your house for your kids. Uh, so we're trying to first survive, right? Um, we're, our communities are under attack a lot, you know, um, undocumented folks, documented folks. It's not like we can go to a meeting over here, let's go to this meeting in this town or whatever. For some folks, that's not all that safe, right? We, we, and they can't do that. So let's have a conversation of how do we use the web, the internet, not only to communicate with each other, to share materials and all that, but then, like you, you were saying earlier, to start telling our stories in our own voices. Because a lot of times we see a lot of the mainstream groups doing some really good work, but also it's like they're not really representing what's actually going on. When other people tell our stories historically, they have told it wrong. When we tell our own stories, we're able to empower ourselves. We, we don't own radio stations. We own very few radio stations, very few television stations because we don't have the economic wealth to buy those stations. With the internet, we control our own online media presence and because the barriers to entry are low. Phone company gets your broadband from or you have your cable company. You only have two choices. So there's great incentives for them to make sure they favor their own content or the content that people are willing to pay more for over others who can't afford it. So just think, you know, if the internet isn't, if it starts going by tiers and by how much money you have, you know, that's going to control what you can and can't do. And then there's the other question that was like, well, whoever the gatekeepers are, are they going to allow us to do that? The future of wireless is even more in peril now because what the FCC did in December that placed the future of wireless mobility access to the internet in jeopardy and the future of connectivity to the internet is going to be a mobile one, right? And now with this AT&T potential T-Mobile mer merger, it further concentrates that market and gives these companies great incentive to basically jerry-rig the internet. AT&T wanted no, net no network neutrality protections as we're talking about on wireless because they understand by 2020, the majority of the Americans are going to connect to the internet through the wireless connection. And those speeds are going to be faster. They're not like it's going to be now. So they know that folks are going to choose mobility over just being stationary. And so they were able to broker a deal where there's no net neutrality protections. 
there's on, on the wireless. They can absolutely slow you down. If you create a great app, they can block your application. So that, that is not internet freedom. My stake um, as part of Latinos for Internet Freedom or Magnet or CMJ isn't so much to beat up on the company per se, you know, and it's not to challenge the profit they're making, but it is to question, you know, what profit margins are acceptable and at whose expense, you know, and so whether it's AT&T or McDonald's or Coca-Cola or Walmart or stop me at any point Ford or, you know, like I can keep going down the list, right, like these corporations have an increasing influence in our lives. From the swimming pools we swim in, to who owns the football signs at the stadiums we go to, to you know, what roller skates are some kid wear. I mean, they have this influence in our life that is completely unchecked. You know, and we know, whether we're talking about the internet, or whether we're talking about um, type two diabetes, or whether we're talking about strip mining, these corporations will always place profits above our survival. Not just like our ability to kind of thrive, but our actual survival. And it is the role of a healthy democracy, small d democracy. It is the role of big government to step in and regulate on behalf of the people. When the court, we need that. You know, so what we are asking for is simple safety mechanisms. We need more competition, we need subsidies, but we also need a strong popular movement and a strong small g government to step in and say it is our job to stand up for what the people need. <laughs>